I'm off to Des Moines, like- Iowa next weekend. Really? Uh, or this week this weekend, yeah. My first road dates in one year. My first plane ride, everything. I'm going to Teehees in Des Moines. And I'm going to go do three shows. One Friday, two Saturday. And I'm ready, man. I feel I'm writing some of the best material in my 11-year career, 10 and a half years now. And I feel I'm, uh, I, I know from the pandemic, I love this more than anything. And comedy saved me, actually. Because if I was just selling motorcycles during the pandemic, you like I was, I, I, I'd been done. I would have been done. I would have no money. I would have really no friends, a couple friends that, you know, have kids and I'd see from work, but I'd be done. So comedy, when I look at it and also getting that diabetes when I did and beating it prepared me not to die for the fucking pandemic. Cause you know, I got COVID back in March. I would have been fucking dead with, with diabetes. So everything's kind of, uh, it's like i i really believe this joey i've said this many times i feel like your life map is laid out for you when you're born i kind of feel like that because here i am like man some somebody's looking out for me because i'm uh i was doing comedy and thank god i was in the patreon and the and the podcast i've been doing the podcast 10 years so without that i would be dust you know it's just crazy to think about you know, uh, I'm very happy that I felt, I always want to tell you that I always felt bad leaving you there. Like, I felt really bad, you know. Like, I'm like, he's like, he's become like my brother over the years. You know, I was happy to see Lee leave and Steve Simone leave, you know. I didn't want to feel like a quitter, you know. At first, that's what I felt like. I'm a quitter for right. leaving but I wasn't leaving because of me. I was leaving for my daughter, you know. I get it. Right now, my daughter is at a play date. You know, well, she's in school, but, uh, you know, on fucking Saturdays and Sundays now, there's no more daughter in the house. Those days are done. Like, her and my wife have fucking lives here. Yeah. You know, Tripoli performed on Friday and Saturday in... Uh, in uh, at the comedy dojo, you know, I was gonna go Thursday night with Jimmy, but his son had a a game on Thursday night, and then Friday night, my wife went out. You know, my wife has friends here. I mean, you know, she goes out once a week, and then Saturday night, I had you know shit to do. We went to a friend's house, and then by the time I got back, I, it was t- it was too late to drive to Tripoli's, and we have that thing on. Saturday nights as a family, we watch the honeymooners at nine thirty. I got to oh. watch it all in the family at nine. Oh. Nine thirty, the honeymooners, and oh. then they go to sleep, and me and my wife watch the honeymooners at eleven. So it's like, you know, man. Uh, Doug Stanhope said it best last week that he is the first time since he was seventeen that he slept in his bed for a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was like everybody else. I got to be honest with you, when the pandemic first hit, I was concerned and worried, but then as it went on, I got happy because I needed to break my spirit, yeah. my soul. I had been going fucking straight since 1970 fucking nine, man. Yeah. I've been going straight. Yeah. You know, I have, I have been out every night since 1979. When my yeah. mother died and I lived with a family, it was hard to stay in a house at night with a family that wasn't yours, you know? Even yeah. though I loved them and I cared for them and they cared for me, just the thought of being in a room was like being in prison at the age of 16. Yeah. So I've been out every night since 1979. Same, You know man. what? Same. It's, it's been a great fucking year. It's been, I had my ups and downs. Since the pandemic started, you know, when the pandemic started, I got caught up with the fucking, uh, with the fucking pills and, you know, my anxiety went off fucking kilter. And then little by little, you know, I went through all these things. I remember eating, I told my wife that up until I think September 1st, I had to fucking knock myself out every night to sleep. 
And when I mean knock myself out, I mean that I had built a tolerance that only heroin could probably conquer. I get I could that. Do, I could do, I was eating five of those capsules. And one of them will kill you. One of those fucking hash tabs yeah. will kill you. 100 milligrams. I was eating five to 600, 200 milligrams. Oh. You know, Are just those to apexes? pass out. Yeah, I was fucking killing my brazapam, whatever that fucking shit is. Those footballs. Oh, I yeah. was eating four or five of those things a night. I had a collection of them. My my doctor kept prescribing them to me since like 2008, and I never took them. Yeah. I just put all the jars together. I had like 20 jars of these pills. So every time Express Grip would send them, I would have a jar of those fucking footballs. And I just, bro, I would, my whole life was turning on World News Tonight and playing fucking, uh, you know, Stop the Anxiety. So right. once, I think I got settled September 1st, once I moved, I went to a party and I seen all these people without masks, and I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to fucking die, but I can't keep living while I'm living. And here we are today. I'm a lot better. What do you feel now since it's, it's been, what, two months since oh, you had COVID this February or last year? No, I had it last March at the beginning, early COVID. Okay, and, and how do you feel now? Do, any after effects or anything? I feel great. It, it was for like three months I was just completely like uh, sluggish. If I was working out, I was kind of burnt and I would, it would come and go just kind of this weird phlegmy shit in my throat. I never had the cough, but I had the fever that would, you would want to shoot yourself with a bullet four days of this gnarly fever. And then, um, I would just, it was weird. It took about three months for me to kind of get back to like, Oh, I'm finally normal again. Um, I was just, burnt all the time so it could have been also uh anxiety and stress and depression with a combo of detoxing from the um from the covid and i also had a weird thing that nobody seems to know what it was but my nose kind of blew up like a bukowski day drinking nose and just ooze out like an oil all day like my nose was just greasy with big old pores I don't know what the fuck that had to be some uh, side effect that nobody's got. But dude, I remember I was doing an Instagram live and someone said, man, you need sunblock. Your nose is fucked up. <laughs>